Okay, in this video what I want to discuss is the idea of pressure differential and how that and how understanding pressure differential is important to understand why a cylinder will extend and retract and some of the pressure variations that we may see when this happens. Okay, so as we know, hopefully we know, uh, oil flows because of a pressure differential. So whenever I have high pressure and it's aware that there is a lower pressure area, meaning a valve is open to indicate that there is a lower pressure area, oil will flow from high pressure to low pressure. And understanding this concept is key to understanding why a cylinder will extend or retract in some of the measurements that we may get when we do that. Okay, so in this position right here, I have a 4-2 directional control valve operated by just a generic lever. And what happens right now is, let's say that the pressure at my pump is at 800 PSI, okay? All right, and that is because the relief valve here is set to 800 PSI. Okay, and so what that means is if I follow my electrical schematic up through here, in this position, I will have roughly 800 PSI right here as well. And no human alive, no matter how big this cylinder, could ever come out and pull that cylinder out. That cylinder is permanently stuck there. Because of the 4-2, the cylinder rather be extended or all the way retracted. In this case, it's all the way retracted, and we have 800 PSI. Now, the question sometimes up is, well, what do we have over here? Because I've always heard that pressure is equal throughout an entire hydraulic system, which is true, but people sometimes forget to add the fact that it has to be in the closed part of the system. And what happens is the cylinder will have one side of the cylinder which is part of the closed, and the other part is open. And what that means by open is, it's open to atmosphere. So if I follow this line down through my directional control valve, it is going to tank. And tanks typically have a vent port, so they're exposed to atmosphere, all right? So when I'm in this position, I would have zero PSI right now. Okay, because this, this, is, this line here is exposed to the atmosphere through the tank. Okay, now if I activate my lever or my push button for a solenoid or something like that, this will shift. Okay, now at the minute it shifts, a lot of things are going to happen with the pressures. One, flow is going to start. So my pressure relief valve, which was previously open, closes. All right, pressure here drops. Pressure here goes up and pressure here drops as well. And let's talk about why. So let's say this is starting to extend. And whatever load I have here, all right, whatever load I have here requires with everything, knowing the load, knowing the size, is 400 PSI. Okay? So to get this to extend, I have to have 400 PSI. Well, how much pressure would I have down here by my pump? Well, I would have greater than 400 PSI, okay? So I would have higher than 400 PSI because I am losing energy through internal resistance, okay? So maybe I have 400, maybe I have, you know, 450 to 500 PSI right here, depending on the length and the size of everything. So this is gonna start to expand. Now, some people would go and say, well, how much pressure should you have here? And a lot of people would come in and say, well, you should have zero PSI. That's true and it's not true. Theoretically, this is now exposed to the atmosphere. But I'm not, I would have zero PSI here, but I wouldn't have zero PSI right here. I would actually have whatever the pressure is needed to return this through this line back to tank. You may end up getting 100, 150 PSI, okay, here. And that amount of pressure is, that's the pressure that it needs to just get back to tank, depending on, again, pipe size, um, 
size of the uh, thickness of the rod and just the sheer distance uh, to get back to the tank. So you may end up with a little pressure here. This is not functional pressure, it's just the amount of, it's just work pressure getting back to tank. And this will extend all the way out. Okay? And then as soon as the cylinder gets all the way extended, flow stops. And as soon as flow stops for that, for that instant, pressure is going to start to rise over here and here, okay? And it's going to go up until it gets to 800 PSI. And the reason it's going to go to 800 PSI is because at 800 PSI, my relief valve is going to open and all of my oil is going to be dumped back to tank. Okay? Now, the pressure on my pressure on my B port over here now is zero. All of the oil is flowing back. There's no oil trying to make its way back to tank. I'm at zero PSI here. Okay? And that's how, it, that's how the pressures will go. Now, I can't give you exact because I don't know what the load is, cylinder size, things like that. How fast this will extend and retract is more based off of the flow, which is given from the pump, which we discuss in other videos. So now, I release the lever or I let go of the push button. Something happens that allows the spring to push the spool of the directional control valve back into its normal position. Okay, now oil is going to flow. A lot of things happen at once. One, this pressure drops, this pressure drops, and this closes because now we have flow. So oil is going to flow through here. Now let's say it takes 600 PSI now to retract it. Okay, so to get the cylinder to retract is going to take 600 PSI. Okay, so this goes up to 600 PSI and starts retracting. A lot of people, again, would say, oh, well, this goes to zero. Okay, well, this is gonna go back to zero because it's exposed to the atmosphere. Again, we do have to, we do have to supply energy to get this oil back there. And so this may be to, uh, let's say, again, 100 PSI to 200 PSI to get this oil back through all the internal resistances so the oil can get back to here. So this will start to retract. While it's retracting, I'm getting probably greater than 600 PSI, maybe 650, 700, whatever the pressure, whatever it, the pressure is required to uh, extend to get overcome any of this internal resistance, okay? so. It's retracting, I have high pressure over here, low pressure over here, and again, that piston is the barrier between that, so it's going to retract, all right? Now, as soon as this gets all the way back, again, a lot of the same things happen. This will drop to zero, because now there's no flow, and we're tied to the atmosphere. This is going to go up to 800 PSI, this goes to 800 PSI, and this is now open. All the oil is flowing back to tank right here, because again, we had this set to 800 PSI, okay? And so again, when we're talking about pressure differential, what we're talking about is how much pressure is on this side of the cylinder's piston compared to this side of the cylinder's piston. And whichever has higher pressure, that is the direction that it will flow. So if I have higher pressure here, lower pressure here, the cylinder is going to extend this way. If I have higher pressure over here, lower pressure over here, the cylinder will extend. Okay? And I like to use a 4-2 to explain this example because if you have a, if you have a, um, 4-3 in here, that center position, depending on what it does, if it's uh, open, closed, tandem, float, kind of doesn't, kind of messes up the example here. But this is what should be happening in pressure in a very simplistic circuit when we start to understand the different pressures that are created uh, in the system and how 
understanding that it's the pressure differential across the piston which will create flow to go. All right, so hope this video helped you uh, understand a little bit more about how pressure works in a system, and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks a lot.